You should already know that the magnetic field due to a long straight wire, a distance r from that wire, is mu naught i over 2 pi r. This, of course, comes from Ampere's law, or in some cases you already know that because of it's just a formula that's given even for non calculus based ENM problems. Well, in 2013 ENM practice test multiple choice, it said what was the magnetic field due to half of a wire? Um, at point P, a distance R naught. So that's what we're going to try to figure out today. Now the equation that we need in order to do that comes of course from Biosavart, which is right here, and we need to define things. So if we take a point right here, you can't really see it, we'll call a little point of it DL, and there's a uh, little current element, a dis and P is a distance R from that current element. Let's define exactly what these things are. So here, DL, a, idea of a current element. I is a scalar, so you can't all of a sudden call it a vector. So instead, what scientists do, if we had a wire like this, we would say, oh, well, there's a little DL pointing this way, here's a DL pointing this way, etc. So it's actually just following the wire, tangent to the wire. R, of course, is from that little current element, to point P. Think of DL a little bit as if there were a, uh, a positive or a point charge here as we did with Coulomb's law. Uh, only you're going to add all of these little DLs up. It so turns out in this case all the DLs are straight but they don't have to be. Um, so it turns out as we we hopefully already remember that in if we have this kind of equation with a, um, a cross product the uh, we end up using sine. So just to make this faster, I'm going to erase this and I'm going to put R and sine of an angle. Um, I'm actually going to call this, theta, well, actually I'm going to call this alpha right now, which is this angle here. Um, the reason for that is we're going to use other angles here. I'm going to actually end up using phi most of the time for a very particular reason. But anyway, um, this angle is always from, you're drawn directly the direction of dr, towards r hat, or start towards r. So this is our angle. This is what's defined. Turns out this gives us the same thing. To find the direction of b at this point, point your fingers, in, your right hand, point your fingers in the direction of dl. Probably going to have to turn your hand upside down. Sweep it towards r, which would be towards your right. Your thumb should point into the page. So the magnetic field, due to this little current element, will be into the page. It will be into the page for all of these current elements with a stronger magnetic field here and weakening as you go away. But they will all point into the page. Now, why am I going to use phi instead of alpha? The reason is, in order to define this little dl, I need to use this right triangle. And alpha, I just don't know how to do that. I'm sure there's someone out there that would say that they, they would. That's, that's fine. We're just going to make this easier. We're going to make this phi. And I could actually use this one as well. This is the sine of phi, but I can also use the cosine of theta here, which I can show you later on, but let's just go with phi for now. Now the idea of calculus is that there's a little dl here, there's a little dl here, dl, 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 and I'm going to add all of those little dbs up. In other words, my total magnetic field due to this wire is going to equal the adding up of all the little dbs that come from all of the little dls. And I'm going to do this from, let's, here is phi right there. And you might say, what in the world phi? There's, there's nothing there at all. In this case, imagine that this has come all the way down. So we're talking about the dl right at the corner. In this case, phi would equal pi over 2 or 90 degrees. And when we want to talk about a dl way up there, you know, actually infinity, then this will be r actually in this case r equals r naught and in this case r is very very long here's phi and in this case r sorry not r naught but r is going to eventually approach zero because this is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller so we're going to add all of those up with calculus and the way at least i remember learning this is we're going to sweep phi from zero from pi over 2 to zero now here's the next problem though. So we understand this is going to be from phi equals pi over 2 to phi equals 0. 
Now here we have a problem. This is our variable of integration, dl, but that's a variable and that's a variable. We cannot have three different variables at one time. So we have to figure out how to get rid of, of these other two variables or put one versus the other. Turns out this is going to be pretty slick here. If this is L from here to here on our triangle, then we should agree that uh, I could use sine, cosine, other things. But I don't want to get this as a function of that because that would already give me the same problem. I would like to get this as a function of something that's a constant. So obviously I can use the tangent of phi equals opposite over adjacent or that L equals R naught. This will be tangent on the bottom, which becomes cotangent. But I want DL, not L. Well, I had to look this up because I am not a uh, trigono trigonometric uh, derivative master. So it turns out that if I take DL d phi, or yeah, d phi in our case, will equal R naught negative cosecant squared of phi. So DL equals negative R naught cosecant squared phi d phi. Now that's nice. I just got rid of DL and I just have phi, but I still got R in there. Watch this. Since cosecant is 1 over sine, so this is squared. So it's going to be 1, 1 squared over sine squared. If sine of phi is opposite over hypotenuse, then 1 over sine would be r over phi. So this would be, um, instead of opposite over hypotenuse, it would be hypotenuse over opposite, which equals r over r naught. So now we have dl equals negative r naught r squared over r naught squared d phi. On, and one of these cancels, so we get dl equals negative r squared d phi over r naught. And I'm going to plug this in here. Now what do we notice? See how there's an r squared times an r, which gives me r cubed, and this r cubed cancels as well. That is very, very helpful. So let me go ahead and grab this and copy it down here. Um, and let's go ahead and just fill in things. So b is going to equal the integral from pi over 2 to 0, but I'm going to get rid of this dl. So let's just clean this up a bit here. So I'm going to bring the sine of phi in. And there's an r still and then dr which is sorry dl which is this duh, 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 and that's multiplied oh i guess i should have copied that sorry i'm doing this just to save to save time now let's clean all this up and since you know this is an integral and constants can come out of an integral so let's let me see so the r's are all going to cancel i'll get a negative mu naught i which is a constant I like my line there 4 pi um, r is all cancel and I'm going to have integral from pi over 2 to 0 of the sine of phi d phi I think I got all of it let's double check oh I almost forgot this last time as well so there's an r naught I don't know why I keep forgetting that so all the r's have canceled uh, I don't have any of my smart kids in class right now to help me catch all these little dumb things that I'm doing. But All right, now, what about going from the integral of sine of theta or the sine of phi? Well, I'll show you how I actually do this, and I've got this copied over to the side. That's why I'm moving down farther than I normally would. And instead of me drawing this straight out, let me bring this over. This is how I remember this. Since taking the derivative is taking the slope. This is a cosine graph. Right there, it's flat, so that's zero slope negative slope. Zero to negative, I end up with a negative sine graph. Here, that's negative slope, zero. Negative zero, negative cosine graph. Zero positive, positive sine graph. This is taking the derivative, and this would be 
taking the integral. So, from the sine of phi, taking the integral would give me negative cosine. Let me remove this now so we can, I guess I can leave that, we've got enough space. So, b equals all of the junk out here. The antiderivative is negative cosine, but I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take the negative out. Cosine of phi evaluated from pi over 2 to 0. Again, copying all of the junk here, saving me time. Boom. So now, evaluating this, final cosine of 0 is 1 minus the initial cosine of 90 degrees is 0 which tells me the magnetic field due to half the wire, I'm going to put a little half there just so we can signify it, is mu naught i over 4 pi r naught. Before we had the magnetic field due to the whole wire equaled mu naught i over 2 pi r. Which means this one is half as much as that one. Okay. Now, I told you earlier I would talk to you about how to deal with this if you chose a different angle. So let's imagine instead of using phi, we decided to use theta. How would that change our evaluation? Well, instead of sine, this would become cosine. Um, down here, this would be instead of tangent. So here, tangent would be L over R. So this would flip, and we would get L equals, um, let me see. So this would be, yeah, it would be r naught times the uh, tangent of theta. And then you'd have to know that instead of using cotangent here, you'd go online and find the rule. It turns out that dd phi of tan theta equals secant squared. And you would just follow the same procedure, and you would end up with the same answer. These would be different. So again, if this were phi, actually I think this is actually very useful. So those of you that don't wish to see this, you can go ahead and cancel now. But let's just go ahead and let's say that we're using this instead. So let's jump up here. Let's take uh, this right here. Only we're going to use cosine instead of sine. And see how this changes. I'll try to do this quickly. This is the cosine of theta. Well, now we get that L equals, uh, sorry, let's back that make this very obvious. So the tangent of, of theta now, tangent of theta, will be opposite over R naught. So L equals R naught tan theta. Uh, we had a rule for that. Let's grab that. Actually, I have it right here to make this uh, very easy. There's our rule. So we have dl equals um, r naught. Tangent turns into secant squared of theta, d theta. It says that's 1 over cosine. So this will be 1 over cosine squared, which since cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, this would be hypotenuse over adjacent. And so hypotenuse is r. Adjacent of theta, however, is r naught. So this would equal r naught. This would be squared, so it would be r squared over r naught squared. Oh, that looks very similar to what we had before. Oh, secant. Oh, yeah, d phi. Now I'd plug that into here, and notice that now this is going to start to become almost identical to what we had before. So there's no real reason for me to follow it along. So. Um, again, this would instead go from uh, whatever we had there, sine. It would go from cosine. You would have to, however, I guess this would be instructive. You would, however, have to change your li limits of integration for cosine. Your limits of integration would go from 0, because notice this would be all the way down, and as it sweeps up, would go to pi over 2. All of that stuff in front is going to be the same, because you're going to have cosine here d theta, right? And then when you evaluate this, what does cosine go to? Cosine goes to sine. So this would end up being sine of theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. And the sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. 
And look, that's the same thing that we had right here. So you'd end up with the notice instead of cosine, you have sine, but your limits are going opposite, which should make sense. This is just like the sine of 60 degrees equals the cosine of 30 degrees. They're complementary. So that's the, that's the way to pull that off. Um, uh, now, there's a lot of big things involved with here using BioSavart, but I think one of the biggest things here is trying to figure out how to get DL from L. You can't just say there's a little DL, which, a, which is a little, D, a little theta times something. You actually have to set up your triangle as a function and then take the derivative. All right? I guess we'll just end right there.